and welcome to Becky's House of Sewing. I have a triumphant return. I have no idea how long this is going to be. I did not take any notes, um, though I have been thinking and collecting things for you to um, share and show. I um, am very excited about where I'm at with some of my projects, and I have some finishes. On top of... Um, we just finished our quilt show with the Charlotte Quilters Guild on uh, Saturday, and it was, uh, I, I think, a great success. We had 217 quilts in the show and lots of uh, great vendors and such. So um, I have a little bit of a video because I helped um, volunteer um, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, to help thing, get things set up and help run the boutique for the kil, uh, guild and all that kind of stuff. So um, I have some of my favorite quilts to show you in pictures and then a little walk through after we first hung all the, all the quilts. So uh, anxious to show you that as well. And that'll be at the end. So if you're not interested, you can cut out. Alrighty. Um... Where to begin? So I have been working on Mrs. Campbell. Oh, let me, let me, let me start with this. Um, so I finally listened to Nicole of Nicole Needleworks and uh, signed up for, um, or got the app, uh, Good Notes. And I, I have to say, I kind of feel like it's a life changer. I wish I had done it sooner. Um, what I like about it more so than um, I'm, I'm flipping to uh, show you pictures, so bear with me. Uh, what I like about it more than using just the file app on my iPad is that it um, shares from device to device, which there might be a way for me to do that on, um, on the iPad. <coughs> Mia, come here. Mia's pacing at the door. Um, but I, I wasn't finding it easy to do. So this is very easy, updates very quickly. Um, I like how it highlights things. Um, and, um, Miss Campbell, where I'm going to start has just been a struggle. Uh, the 46 count I have struggled with, the silk I have struggled with. It's my first silk project, so I don't know how I feel about it. But uh, this is the finished work of Mrs. Campbell. There, get a little closer. Don't be shy. That's Mrs. Campbell. What it will become. And I will say, <laughs> this is beautiful. Um, so getting, um, I did have the little booklet at first, um, which is, a, it's great. Ooh, the lighting. Sorry. Um, there we go. That's a little bit better. It's wrinkled. You're welcome. Uh, the the booklet is great, but I just kept it was I was losing my space. So it was when I get down close to the edge of the page turn, it was just really troublesome. And one of the great things about Hands Across the Sea is that when you get a downloaded PDF, you have lots of versions to pick from. You can either pick the individual sheets, but also you have uh, color, black and white. You also have a choice of um, one whole sheet. So I can really expand it and I can move it myself without losing track. So I haven't gotten a lot more done, but I, I do feel really good. I got that D done. Um, I had finished the D, or gotten close to finishing the D, and the D's in a real light color, um, and then realized I was down a stitch and had to put it away. So then I started on something just real easy, just the red part, and got the red straight across a little bit better. Um, I bought a, a beading needle uh, to do this, um, which has worked a little bit better for me as well. Um, able to get in the holes a little bit easier um, because the fabric is really tight um, and it and the the eye of the beading needle is a little smaller 
so it, it keeps my silk in place a little bit better. So those are the things that I have liked. Changing how I read the pattern, changing my needle, um, and I'm using a hoop now as well, and that's kind of helpful. I have been debating about putting it back into a um, scroll frame and just not using the stand. I haven't decided yet to be determined. But that is Mrs. Campbell. Um, next up is um, Elizabeth. No. Hello from Liz Matthews. Um, I have her Dutch sampler. Oh, hold on. Erase back. Um, let's see if I can make this bigger here. So this is the ginormous work. It's something crazy like 300 plus by 300 plus. Um, and I uh, love all the motifs and I love the border but you can even see in this picture from the um, reproduction that you in the border there are flowers and you can't really see them so there's a lot of um, faded um, uh, colors in here and I just didn't like it on the lighter color I wanted to be able if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do close to 400 by 400 I'm gonna see my stitches if you know what I mean. So, um, I've been working on that. Let me get that out. That's in my, um, one of my favorite bags. I made that bag when I first joined my South Carolina sewing group because I had to show up with swag, you know. They had to make sure that I knew what I was doing. <laughs> um, so, I've, I've finished a whole motif, that uh, basket. This is on a 36 count wood smoke and I'm using the DMCs. I've done a little bit more on this darker border and I finished that berry basket and the wreath around it. It's very fun. It's also a bed sheet. Look how big this is. I can't even get it in the screen. And it goes like this. It's a big sucker. My mother has always told me, get the big one. I'm attracted to the big stitches. What can I say? You gotta like what you like. Um, what I've also been working on, um, well, let me, that's a start. Um, and that's a start too. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I finished what I was working on earlier, and I gave, um, I already gave the pattern away, but it's a prairie schooler, um, so my sewing group from South Carolina is, um, doing, uh, hashtag Project Rabbit Sew Along. I've been terrible about using the hashtag, but I think about using it. That counts, right? So, um... The goal was to do something that had some kind of rabbit related theme or fabric or whatever. So I got fox and rabbit fabric and I did this little fairy from Prairie Schooler in like 1989. So this is the finish. This is a finish. Ooh. So um, I did the back here and I... Um, so how I did this is I kind of mapped out where I wanted the pom-pom to be and I sewed the pom-pom on after I put interfacing on and I put a piece of batting behind there too because I filled it with um, walnut shells. And so then I sewed the, um, the fabric on um, right sides together and flipped it out like a, like a normal pillow and filled it from the end and then hand sewed it together um, and that worked much better I've gotten it much fuller than I have in the past I would still like it to be a little fuller and I think what I'll do next time is stuff the corners with batting or fill it, polyfill or whatever I have on hand 
and then also put the walnut shelves in there so I can get a, a little bit of a tighter fit and then I think I'll finish it with polyfill because you have to not fight the walnut shells falling out <laughs> as you're trying to stitch it up um, but I am uh, pretty proud of how um, full it is and nice and heavy and um, it looks really cute don't I look cute holding my this is a, again the the fairy this is the dust bunny fairy the spring dust bunny so she's carrying her thimble and she has a broom so she's riding her dust bunny to go clean for the spring very cute I'm gonna set it up here so you guys can admire it from afar so then I had to start um, and I used the other portion of I guess I got a fat quarter of it. Again, it's fox and rabbit flannel flower. And I really like it. It's got some nice modeling to it. Let me pull up what I've been working on. I got Wilbur from Teresa Coget. Almost there. Almost there. See how cute he is. Aww. Little Wilbur. So, uh, he looks cute from here, but can I just tell you, that's a lot of shading. A lot of shading. So, there is a lot of, like, two stitches here, two stitches there, three different colors in this area. Um, but he goes pretty quick. Um, the beauty of doing small, small projects. Um, these are the threads. They're all the call for, so they're a combination of classic color works and Weeks dye works. I do not like Weeks dye works. They just felt real cottony, for lack of a better term. They didn't feel smooth, or they don't feel smooth to work with. Um, I was surprised. And it may be just the color, but, um, yeah, they had troubles with them but these are all the colors does that look like a pig to you <laughs> and this is where I'm at I kind of started in the center so I can make sure I got the black border I debated about doing the black border or not but I, I clearly am um, he's really cute I just finished his eye and part of his face today get in there I'm doing it two over two so it's a little bulky, but I don't mind. So that's my Wilbur. I've been enjoying him. But what I started is a peacock, a unicorn. Ooh, I'm sewing my, hold on, let me concentrate here. I'm sewing my whip into my zipper. Never good for my project bag. Okay, get that in there. Protect it a little bit better. This is my project bag I made for my thing. Little owls. It's cute, right? Um, so I started a peacock, a unicorn, and a badger. I've been dying to do this, and I don't, I, I really, I don't know why. This is what the finished work will be. This is a pattern based on a tapestry. So this is what we call full coverage. These are some of the motifs coming out of it. It's all cross stitches except for the water that is satin stitching. Isn't that fun? And essentially why I think I like it so much and a lot of people that I've seen do this uh, pattern have talked about it. It's like coloring. It's coloring with thread because you do an outline and then you do the inside. These are all the colors. I had to kind of sort it by the the chart is in color and because there's like 29 colors I went ahead and just sorted them by color so it's easier to see. And this is where I'm at. See my little bunny needle minder? 
I got um, I got my, my sewing group these little bunny needle minders for our rabbit sew along. Because you gotta have swag. So look how big this is. Ooh. So exciting things about this. This is done in the DMC. Um, and um, I bought, because it is like essentially full coverage, I didn't want to get an expensive fabric. So I got Vintage Country Mocha um, uh, Zweigart. And I got it at a 40 count. And I love it. So I can do one over one, 40 count. Let's see if I can get the lighting better. Sorry, peoples. Isn't that pretty? It's, just, it's been very fun to stitch. Um, I thought about getting the platinum color. I don't have a good reason necessarily why I did one or the other, um, but I thought it might be nice to have a little bit of a contrast as I'm putting some of the fabrics and uh, threads in. It might be easier to see instead of having a light on light color. Um, so those are the things that I've done. I showed you one of the finishes just because it made sense with, um, oh, hello, put the chart in with it. Put the chart in with it. I showed you one of my finishes. I have two finishes. Fully finished objects. The FFOs, Ron. Um, I think those are all the things I've been working on. Um, but I want to show you my second finish. I got this piece done in, in a frame. Isn't that pretty? So I did this framing. I took the glass out. Um, I'm, this is the first time I framed anything in this fashion where I used pins or where I had to kind of really lace something. Um, so I, I did pins, I didn't lace, and um, I, the board, the um, foam cord that I used is a little thicker, and it's not necessarily cut correctly. It's a little too small width-wise for the frame. Um, I think it's okay height-wise. So I don't have, I have it essentially taped with... Um, artist tape but isn't it pretty I got the frame at Michaels um, it's a 16 by 20 frame uh, off the off the rack which is how Jean Farish intended that uh, sampler to be um, she did the, it's called Roxy it's still available on her Etsy shop and she did it in 2021 as and it might have been 2020 that it started I can't remember exactly when it started I didn't finish exactly on time but I wasn't horribly behind either um, she did it as a sew along so every month we got a new uh, pattern and we got uh, access to a video on how to do some of the stitches because a lot of these strawberries let me get it back out are specialty stitches be it rice stitch we did satin stitch we did some long long arm stitches here in those long borders in between the alphabets eyelets Let's see I forget all the stitch names but you can see like every other big strawberry is a is a different kind of stitch. So I've enjoyed looking at it now in a frame. And again, I might revisit it in the near future to get um, better foam core and repin it. It didn't take as long as I thought it was going to take to pin up. Uh, it straightened out really easily. So... 
Um, I know this is on, I think it's on 32 count and it's Victoria's sponge cake color, which I think is a legacy linen, but I'm not sure. Um, and the colors, we used the Cosmo threads because uh, she made it a kit. So I was able to use those. Um, it was a, it was a very fun stitch and um, I'm really pleased that I get to look at it now. And that's all the cross stitch I've been doing in the last couple weeks. I, uh, I've been working. <laughs> I have not finished my quilts. Um, and so I am actually filming in the living room um, because my sewing room's a mess. I actually have a six foot table out right over there <laughs> um, full of fabric. Um, I intend, I rearranged my wall of shelving and I intend to cut down a lot of my fabrics to make them um, more accessible for scrap quilting uh, in the way that Lori Holt cuts her fabrics. Uh, so I got, she talks about it on YouTube so you can easily go to her YouTube channel and take notes, but in her Scrappiness is Happiness um, quilt book, which is, um, I think it's like $35, but it's got like 40 quilt patterns in it and also lots of good instructions and storage options and blah 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 like that. Um, blah blah blah. Listen to me. Blah 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 blah. Um, I just realized I left my threads out for a peacock and a unicorn. Um, so I want to, um, I'm not obviously going to be able to do it all in one day, but I want to get my fabrics more cut down so that I can really see what I have. I have a lot of projects started or collected to start and I just, I just need to sew. So I need to make it easy for me to grab and sew and not, again, one of those, one of those keys is to always clean up before you leave so that it's ready for you to sit down and sew. Um, but I really do want to kind of have fabric like everywhere and I need to kind of get it all in front of me and in one place. So that is my current goal. So I think I'm going to stop there so I can have some time to start some laundry and get going again in my sewing room. Um, and then that will give us plenty of time to see the video I took from the Charlotte Quilters Guild. Um, if you are interested in quilting, um, no matter what your skill level is, the Charlotte Quilters Guild and the Charlotte Modern Quilt Guild are two great places uh, full of very talented people um, that you don't have to feel intimidated about. Um, <laughs> the, the greatest thing is that it's very similar to the Crossroads community. It is a great community of uh, learning and being inspired and just doing what you love. There really are no rules anymore. <laughs> I, there really weren't probably rules to begin with, but we like to get stuck in perfectionism and um, have to do things certain ways where there are so many more time-saving ways to make patterns and, and quilt and just get sewing. Um, so uh, come, my, my point is, come if you'd like to come and uh, be part of our guild we would love to have you um, uh, be amongst your people <laughs> and learn new skills there's lots of skills to learn be it cutting better or a particular sewing technique or quilting technique or how to put things together color uh, theory there's so much to learn um, to improve our skills, but it doesn't matter where your skill is. Um, just come. We actually give you kits. So, cause we give, we donate quilts to Levine Children's Hospital. Uh, we also donate quilts to, um, the elderly that need like fidget quilts. We also, uh, do wheelchair quilts and we, uh, do veteran quilts. 
So there's lots of ways to participate and practice and have fun and giggle, which is the best part about any sewing group. <laughs> so if you're interested, please come. And other than that, I will see you guys another time. I know this is not my normal um, uh, video day. This is a Sunday. Sunday, the 5th of March. Um, but I'll, I'll get back to routine. I was on vacation and thought I was going to video and just got busy playing and sewing. And then this week was the guild. Uh, quilt show and I was working oh, hard <laughs> coming home really tired and just I, I couldn't do it so I hope you enjoy where I'm at with things I'm really having a good time with my projects and I'll talk to you soon